This is my favorite chord from John Williams' score to Superman the Movie. I'll talk about what it is, how it's used, and later in the video I'll give some piano examples and exercises to help you learn it and incorporate it into your own music. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Keith Horn's Chord of the Week! In 1978, the first DC Comics film was released in theaters, Superman the Movie, directed by Richard Donner and starring Christopher Reeve. But most important, scored by John Williams. Hey, good. Now, I know I talk about John Williams a lot on this channel in these videos, but he writes the best chords. And nobody is better than him, in my view, uh, of using those chords, those harmonies, to support a narrative to help tell a story, to help capture the essence of the character. There's nobody better. Here's a section from the opening titles of the film. This is one of two heroic themes for Superman, the other being this. We know John Williams does love a perfect fifth. I mean, or now in these videos, I always talk about harmony, but I want to talk about the melody for a minute because the the structure of the melody is, I think, worth talking about. We have an eight bar phrase. So the first two bars. That's four bars, but when we get to the fifth bar, repeated. That's an F major nine, sharp 11. And you could, it's easy to build. If you're in the key, whatever key you're in, go to the four chord. In this case, we're in C. Go to the four, build a triad, and just keep stacking thirds until you have six notes. That's how you build this chord. And then he resolves it on an inverted C major 7. Another way, an alternative way, I guess, to think of this chord uh, is as a sort of a polychord, but not really. It, I mean, you could think of it as an E minor over F major. It's not a polychord in the sense that the Petrushka chord is a polychord, F sharp over C. That's sort of a true polychord. That's kind of the OG of polychords. But this, I mean, you can think of it this way. You can think of it as a minor triad that is a major seventh above a major triad. Both keys at the same time? So whichever way helps you learn it, understand it, and memorize it so it can become part of you, go for it. And I don't know how he does it so well, but John Williams just totally nails the emotional components of characters. And uh, he gets the emotional component of heroism here with this chord. This one specifically, there's something, there's, it's just emotionally laden. It's kind of like, um, this whole theme has a sense of stability and, and safety and even relief. Just, I don't know what it is, but it just, everything's gonna be okay when I hear this chord. I don't know what it is. He's just a master at, at finding the essence of characters, the essence of stories and translating it into sound. Notice when the melody reaches the tonic again when we have it's it's a two seven it's a D minor seven that resolves to the tonic alone now this theme with all these open fifths and it's a very American sound I mean the Superman himself says what he's all about I mean well uh why are you here? There must be a reason for you to be here. Yes, hmm? I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. <laughs> You're gonna end up fighting every elected official in this country. I'm sure you don't really mean that, Lois. Truth, justice, and the American way. <laughs> and uh, by 1978, and even well before that, the world had grown accustomed to the American sound being that of Aaron Copeland. And John Williams definitely was inspired by Fanfare for the Common Man for his Superman themes. Here's a little bit of that from Copeland. Thank you. 
So we've put that into the key of C. Watch this. Right? There's that chord. I see what you did there. Copeland has it. Copeland has it here. And it's without the added sharp 11. Uh, but that sound of a major 9, uh, it's, it's a very Copeland-esque kind of sound. I mean, the opening of Appalachian Spring is that very sound. Yeah, that is an, uh, uh, that's an A major 9, but it's voiced as an inverted A triad and an inverted E triad together. Very similar to this. Right, but this has the added tone of the sharp 11. And I think the historical context of when this film came out is worth noting because the Vietnam War had ended a few years before and uh, not all Americans were feeling very patriotic after that war ended. Uh, American culture at the time was kind of like the antithesis of uh, the end of World War II, the greatest generation, ticker tape parades for soldiers coming home. That was not the world of America in the mid to late 70s at all. So it may have been that, and I'm just speculating here, but it may have been that a lot of Americans were hungry for a restoration of some sense of American pride, and maybe this movie gave that to them. It doesn't really apply to me because I was a little kid when this movie came out and didn't see it in the theater. I, I didn't even see it till it was on TV in the 80s, but man, when I heard this chord, even at eight years old, I'd hear that and just throw my fists in the air and just be like, it was awesome. So let's take this chord from Superman through some exercises. First, I'll play in the chord through the plagal cycle, like this. Next, we can think of this as a polychord for a second. If we have a major triad, an F, take it through voice leading through the authentic cycle like this. Right, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. Right. And the right hand would be E minor, A minor, D minor, G minor, and so on. And we combine the two hands, we get this. So this is Chord of the Week video number 52, uh, the final video in this series, for now. Uh, maybe, the, maybe this is season one. Uh, I'm going to move on to some other things for a while, but uh, I will return to Chord of the Week. And if you like this video, please consider checking out uh, the others in this series. I have them laid out, so um, if you want, you can start from number one, which is the Petrushka Chord, which was this one. This. Uh, and there are exercises at the end of every video. So if you want to, if you want, you could listen, you, listen, you could watch the first video and practice it for a week. 10 minutes a day is even enough to do that much. And I promise you at the end of those seven days, this chord will be a part of you and it'll be a part of your vocabulary. Move on to the next one if you want, or move on to another Stravinsky video. Or if you're a fan of John Williams, you can go through the series of John Williams videos that I have. There's at least 10 of those. There's, uh, there's a handful of Stephen Sondheim videos. You know, I talk about Holst, I talk about Rush, I talk about a little bit of Joe Satriani, because I'm a guitar player as well. Uh, this applies to general musicianship. And my whole goal with doing these videos was to, to find chords that I love, that are iconic or unique or just plain great, and take them out of their context and give you guys a tool set to practice them so they can become part of you, so you can use them however you want. So I hope you find value in these videos. Uh, I'm really enjoying making them. Uh, thank you for your subs, your likes, your comments. I really enjoy the conversations that we have, even when we disagree. That, I love that too, because you know, that's how we learn from each other. That's how, that's how we can grow as individuals, as composers, arrangers, orchestrators, uh, as people. And 
so thank you for the engagement. I, I hope we can continue uh, building relationships because I, I love doing these for you guys. And as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for listening and happy practicing. Yeah. Who this? This be, yo, who this? Yo, who this? Who this?